guys, this episode we're talking about the active admin gem and how to use it to build an admin interface for your Rails app. So this gem is rather interesting. It relies heavily upon either auto-generated code or DSLs to customize the admin interface. Um, so this is interesting. It uses Devise, it creates an admin user model, so all of your regular users are very separated out from Active Admin, which is very nice for security reasons. There's no chance that anybody could ever, you know, set their role to admin and gain access to it because they physically wouldn't have a record in the admin user table. So that is nice. You can customize this so that you can use roles and the same user table if you want. But this will look at your registered models and add them to the admin interface and it will generate index pages, search pages, or search filters. It will generate show pages, edit forms, all of that stuff automatically for you so long as you just register the model in the admin. You can even tell it to use and pull out specific scopes from your models to display and allow for filtering. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with it and it has its own DSL for customizing your forms, your ransack filters, your scopes, your views even, and adding buttons to the show and adding actions. It's got a massive DSL and that's one of the pros and the cons with using this gem. It's one, really easy to customize things a little bit, but number two, it's kind of very hard to customize things a whole lot because you have to do it all within their own, um, well, their own DSL. And so that gives you pros and cons, but let's dive into it and try it out and take a look at what we're, we're working with. So one cool thing is that we need to just register our models and we can go at our scopes, filters, and customize our index in as few lines of code as that is. We don't have to worry about any model stuff, no controller stuff, no views. All of that happens inside our admin fo file for our product. So that's kind of neat. Let's dive into the gem itself. I'm gonna use the version that's on GitHub, the latest version that's stable. You can use the master branch, but there is possibility that that will break as they're actively working on it. So let's create a new Rails app called Admin Example, and we'll open this up in our editor and go to the gem file, paste in Active Admin in there, and we also need to grab inherited resources from Rails five as this gem is been deprecated and then taken over by the active admin team. And last but not least, I actually had to specify devise manually in here to get the generator to run. So that may or may not be fixed later on as you watch this, but at the time of recording, I did have to manually speci specify devise. So we can run bundle to install that. And once this is done, we can run Rails Generate Active Admin install to install it. So Rails Generate Active Admin colon install will set up our admin user device model. We'll set up configs for Active Admin in our initializers folder, create routes for Active Admin and an app admin folder where we create all of our admin sections in there. So here we go. This gives us all of those files. We can run rake db migrate in order to add the admin user model. And we can also run rake db seed in order to create our admin for the admin area. So if you open up seeds.rb, you can see that it added a line for creating an active admin user and it's just admin at example.com and the password of password. So we'll run that as well. It also created active admin comments so that you could comment on any model in the admin, period. They're polymorphic so they can be applied to anything. And lastly, let's generate two scaffolds so we can play with those. So we'll have user with a name and an email and we'll have Rails generate scaffold post with a title, a body as text, a published at date time and we will also have a user references. So this way we can see how it works with associations. So let's run right db migrate, create those, and let's start up our Rails server. 
and see if we can log in to localhost 3000 slash admin. After a second attempt, I got it to work. I actually ran into this issue with jQuery UI date picker um, and I had to use the active admin from uh, the master branch on GitHub in order to make this work. So they're in the process of re-releasing an updated version of the gem. They're working on version 1.0 for official full Rails 5 support, but it does work perfectly fine in Rails 5 if you use the master branch. Um, so use at your own risk, I guess, and we can log in here and we will have our dashboard. This comes from the configuration of app, admin dashboard and this is the block that it uses to generate that container so if we deleted this we'll see this block disappear and there you go so this is actually generating the views inside of a ruby file which seems a little weird so these div span small tags are all coming from a active admin dependency called arbre you can find out a little bit about this in their documentation um, take a look at Arbre components. This is the section for that. It shows a little bit about how to do that. It comes with some cool stuff like panels that you can use in columns to split up your stuff. Similar to how you would with Bootstrap, you're just using Ruby to design your views instead. So it's kind of interesting that uh, they chose that route, but the benefit is you can make very quick tweaks to it without having to dive into all your views and have a lot of files to, to define your admin with. So they have opted for this route. It has its benefits and its drawbacks, but it does work. And this um, is our admin user section. We can see that you get all the admin users listed out in a table. You can filter them. You can type in whatever you want and that will automatically search for you and tell you which fields you searched upon. But you'll notice that our models don't exist in here just yet. So the reason for that is we have to add them to files in admin and we have to register them with active admin. So let's go do that. If we go into our app and we say Rails generate active admin resource, we can pass in the name user and post and this will generate two empty files for us that register user and post models in order to display them. So this is great except these um, have to be customized to pass in the permitted parameters. It's not going to generate those for you although I kind of wish it would but here we can say name and email and then for post we can permit params what do we have? Title, body, published, at, and user ID. So we had those columns there, and now we should be able to refresh and see our posts and our users. And if we created a user, Chris, Chris at GoRails, we can see that I have a, a page. It worked. It's kind of like admin scaffolds pretty much with some nicer views, but you'll notice here that it is smart enough to understand there's an association for the user ID column, and it gives me a dropdown for that instead. So we can add a title and a body, and if we fill out the published at, that would of course fill it out, but let's leave it out and create a button up here to add that in so that we can have a publish and unpublished button. Now the way that this works, is that we can have a member action here, which is kind of like defining a route, and we could have a publish one with the method of put. And this is very similar to going into your routes files and saying do member uh, put publish. It's almost exactly the same, except that you're defining it inside of active admin instead. So let's move those up here organize that. So that is how you would define the route and the block that you pass it is actually the code for the action. So you would say post.find params id post.update published at time.zone.now and then redirect 
to the admin post path and pass in the post. And that is as simple as it is, but we need it to display on that show link. So here we can say action, uh, what they call it? So you can find all this stuff in the uh, action items. So action item, publish, do, and this is a customizable for the show action or the index or whatever. And each of these is one of the commands in the DSL that you can use to add links to your views. So if we say only show, we can add a link to publish at publish admin post path. And it will automatically load up the post variable for us and we want method of put to match. And we only want to do this if post.published at is not a thing. So we can refresh. And now you'll see the publish button. Clicking that will hit our little block that we wrote and mark published at as the current time. So that's really neat that we can add that without touching views or writing controllers or adding routes. We kind of all do that in this one file. And we can do the same thing. If we duplicate this, we can have unpublish for the unpublish route. And we'll do this if it is published. And we can copy this one and add our own unpublish method in here that sets it to nil instead. So now if we refresh, we have the ability to unpublish. I spelled that wrong. And that sets it to nil and it shows up as empty and we can publish and that button will change. And that's as easy as it is to add in an action like that into the UI. So that's pretty cool. We're using some of the DSL for that. It's starting to mix a little bit of our views as well as our routes and our actions our controller actions into this one file though. So you might notice that that gets a little confusing. Um, and this is kind of the main drawback of using Active Admin. Once this gets about 10 times longer and you have a lot more complex admin interactions, this gets a little frustrating to work with. But at the beginning, the easy ability for you to add in these actions and stuff is very, very nice because the speed of development can, uh, can be very quick. Another one of the things that I want to point out here is that it interprets that user ID into the association and makes a clickable link for us to navigate between posts and their authors, which is very cool. So it's smart enough to know to use those associations to build out that admin UI. I like that a lot. The other thing we can do is we can go into the post model and we can say scope published and published ones are where not published at is nil, but unpublished ones are where it is nil. And if we add those in, we can go to the top here and tell active admin we want to display those scopes unpublished. And all of course is a scope that always comes with every application record or active record model. Um, so going back to posts, we can scope these and say, well, there's zero published ones. There's one unpublished one. If we go to view it, we click publish and go back. There's now one published record and zero unpublished records. This is pretty neat that you're able to add in scopes that quickly. You don't have to go and customize views or anything. You can just say scope this, scope that, and that's it. Another thing you might want to do is customize the form. So for example, with devise, you have an encrypted password column in the database, but you obviously don't want that to ever be in your forms. So you want to be able to customize it. Well, this is really nice because you can say form, do F, and you can say inputs, details, do and just put in your input. So you can say, let's have one for a user, one for the title, one for the body. And it will go and say, okay, this is 
a user association. So let's create a dropdown and let's load up the users and populate the dropdown with them. Then the title is a string, so let's create a text field. But body is a text column, so let's create a text area for that one. And then at the very end, we can say actions, which will update our form to say update post and cancel. And before you know it, you have a form that's customized exactly how you want it. Now, there's no way I can cover everything about Active Admin in an episode or even really a series, but Active Admin has a really good documentation site where you can learn about Arbre, the uh, Ruby syntax that you can use that DSL for to create your views, like the form stuff or the, um, show actions or any of that stuff. You can use that to build out your views in the admin a little bit more. You can look up how to create custom pages as you see here. You can design your indexes as blogs or grids or tables or whatever you would like. They have all kinds of different things like building your custom controller actions, batching actions, which are on the homepage. So if you go to one of these, you can check all of these off and say, delete all of them, or maybe you want to mark 10 posts as published all at once. You can see how they recommend you doing that. They also have information on how to set up Pundit to enforce uh, permissions across different user roles, all kinds of different things. It's been used by so many people. You'll always be able to kind of find a good example of how to implement whatever feature you're trying to implement into Active Admin. So that's a quick introduction to it. I hope you enjoyed it. Active Admin has been in use by me over the years so many times that um, it's definitely been worth its value. There's been frustrations around how to organize those admin files well, but you can always figure out how to pull stuff out into concerns or something that you would include if you really needed it to. But I found that if you just organize these in good chunks and you keep all of them like action items together and member actions together and keep it consistent, it's really not too hard to manage, even if this gets to be three or 400 lines of code. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you later.